Hi, I'm Margaret Ryle, and I want to welcome you to the first of a set of uh, videos to help you think about action research. I have been guiding action researchers for over a decade, and I hope that you will find the resources, the activities, and the videos on this website helpful for you as you engage in your own process of action research. And um, I hope that you're doing it with a group of people because action research is, is always collaborative. It's always done um, with people in a social setting, but it's helpful to have other action researchers and even other action researchers working in other settings so that you can compare notes and uh, help each other through this process. So I hope you're using this in conjunction um, with either a program or your own grouping uh, we find that learning circles is a very effective way of um, working in working on action research. And if you want to explore learning circles, I'll show you a link to that at the end of this uh, tutorial. So, action research is made up of two words: action and research. Action refers to the activist, the role of the activist, and the activist sees problems that need solutions. They work collaboratively with others to solve problems. Um, and they are motivated to improve situations. Researchers have a slightly different perspective. Researchers see connections between events and outcomes. A researcher uses evidence to understand uh, the change process. And a researcher is motivated to generate new ideas from one context and uh, share it with the next context. So action researchers plan and study change through both analysis of evidence and reflection on the role that they played in the change process. Taking on this, this balance of roles uh, can create transformational learning for the action researcher on three levels. So on the first level, um, transformational change affects the individual. We often start action research with a question how can I improve the way I do? And then there's um, some practice or some skill that you're interested in improving. Um, so on the first level, the researcher focuses inwardly, reflecting on their own change in skill, knowledge, and identity. How did this process of doing action research shape the way they think, shape the way they act, uh, shape the way they share information with other people, their identity uh, in the Context. About over the course of these different tutorials, we'll talk about the process, but I wanted to give you one this slide early on. This is kind of the overview. So, in action research, you, you, you identify a problem um, or a situation that you would like to improve. You study and plan for an action that will improve it. You take that action. You collect evidence about the effect of your actions on the social, the complex social system. You reflect on what you think were the important variables, what other people told you were the important variables, and you plan a new, and you study and plan a new action. You keep revising your action, you keep studying the outcomes of it, and you keep sharing the results, trying to get a better handle on what makes change work in the setting that you're working in. So why engage in action research? Well, action research is a, is a um, plan for continuous learning throughout your career. So there are different ways you can approach the acquisition of expertise. Um, you can use what other people have done, really try to find the perfect lesson, perfect it, teach it over and over again with the goal of getting having to get easier and more efficient and taking less time. Um, one of the drawbacks of this is that you're not very uh, excited about change because change disrupts this well-practiced, well-rehearsed, and effective uh, approach. After the expertise is the innovative or creative approach. So in this, in this path, you constantly try new things. You're willing to experiment with whatever, whatever the next new theory, the next new program, the next new technology, but it's a trial and error approach with not much thought about why something works because you're on to the next thing. So there's lots of, of experimentation, but not much effort to 
uh, research and understand what makes something effective. So the, the middle line that I'm suggesting, the middle path that I hope you're um, taking, is that toward adaptive expertise that balances the willingness to try and experiment and change with the uh, rigorous process of actually trying to figure out why something works or doesn't work in a setting. So this next slide is a little is a little tricky, but uh, you can pause the uh, tape if you want to read it more closely. This gives uh, a slight, slightly more description of these three paths, the path to innovative expertise, adaptive expertise, or efficiency expertise. Um, and as I said, I hope all of you will, will want to engage in this practice of adaptive expertise because it helps you learn in and from practice. Uh, it involves an effort to develop flexible routines and continually adjust the fit between the needs of the specific learner in real time and over time matching the needs of the layers of communities that are involved in any educational setting. Uh, so the, the, the purpose of this, these tutorial, these resources, is help you to become a lifelong action researcher. If it were only about your own practice and getting better at your practice, it would be what has been called reflective practice. And, and it's important to engage in that, but action research is something more than just reflective. It is trying to understand activity systems, complex activity systems. So at the second level, the researcher is developing an, an understanding of the factors that control change and result in group or organizational change. Now, as you prepare for your action research, that you're going to contextualize the problem you're interested in. Suppose your problem is low motivation of learners or disengaged um, workers in the workplace. Well, there are two ways to contextualize that problem. One is to contextualize it in your setting and to understand everything you can about how it's operating right now. What causes students to be disengaged or uh, what is causing, what do you think are the causes in the workplace? So one is to get a rich description of your uh, workplace and the other classroom, your learning environment, the place that you're going to do your action research. And the other is to contextualize your problem in the research literature. So what do I mean by that? Um, it's commonly referred to as writing your lit review, but it's more than, than reading some things and writing about them. It's trying to figure out how did people who encountered the same problems that you're interested in how did other people solve them in other settings? Not yours, but in settings that are similar to yours. Or how do they solve similar problems in contexts, in different contexts? When you read the research literature, it should give you ideas. It should give you hints about what has worked in other settings like yours, and hints about how other people who have had the same issue that you have, have approached it. That's where you go to look for the action that you're going to take. Once you have an action, um, a force field analysis is, help, is one helpful way of trying to figure out whether or not you think this is going to work in your setting. So in a force field analysis, you look at the forces for change and you look at the forces against change and you try to get a sense of what they are because the more you understand them before you get started, the better able you will to be sensitive to them as you're doing your action research. Another activity that we'll talk about in, in another tutorial is the logic models. Um, creating a logic model where you try to map out what the situation is, what the inputs you have, and what you are going to, what are the outputs, what are you actually going to do, and then what do you expect the outcomes to be, both in the short term and in the long term. By trying to work these out, you create for yourself a theory of change your theory of change. What do you think will cause change in the setting that you're working in? A third tool that we will we'll discuss in another of these tutorials is activity theory, which gives you a framework for looking at the action, not just from your perspective, but from a number of different perspectives. So the agent of change, the action researcher, is trying to affect uh, an action, a change in the social setting. 
but they work with a community of people and these people are divided up in terms of different roles and they have different responsibilities and there are norms, rules, and, and culture that defines what goes on in, in the particular setting that these people are working in and there are tools, um, technology, language, paper, pens, all sorts of different tools that mediate the action between the agent, the action researcher, and the community and the action. So this is another way of making sure you're paying attention to the complexity of the social setting that you're working in. And then the last type of uh, change that I would like to talk about is what I've called scholarly change. Um, this is the changes that take place when you step out of your role, your current role, and in effect take on a role of leadership. Because when you start to explore what makes things work, you try to improve your own practice and improve the practice of others, you are taking on a leadership role. Because a, leader, a leader is someone who tries to have everybody in an organization or in a classroom work to their full potential. So when you start this process of action research, it will move you to a level of leadership, informal or formal. Um, often people notice that you are someone who engages in regular practice of learning and help others learn, and so often you become a leader. But the process of being a leader is wrapped up in this identity as someone who understands, who searches for deeper understanding and shares that understanding with others. So we will be working through that process, and this is the website where all the tutorials and resources will be. But the companion website is the one where students have shared their work, as I hope you might, at a conference or publishing your work online. So if you go to the Center for Collaborative Action Research, you will see school-based project and community-based projects. Um, that will give you a sense of how others have done action research. And I encourage you to read what others have done as it will help you in your own process of engaging in action research. So that's the end of this first tutorial. Uh, it was just a quick overview of action research and some of the outcomes. Um, I have placed some resources here. As I said, this resource right here, this, the um, Center for Collaborative Action Research Interactive Space is where the tutorial will exist. On the main site you will find examples of students' work. And if you want to be part of larger uh, communities of practice around action research, and I hope you will, the American Education Research Association, Action Research SIG, has a site. And the Action Research Network of the Americas um, also has a website that, and both of them have lots of resources. So I hope you'll want to become members of both, and I look forward to you in the next video.